Good evening, church family. Uh, we welcome you to another Wednesday night recharge as we come to you from our home through the benefit and blessing of technology. So welcome, welcome, welcome to this time of Bible study. Grateful to God that you are joining us. Thankful also for our production team, Sister Renfro and my daughters, Rachel and Rebecca. Rebecca sitting behind the camera and so we're making sure that this is done so that we can stay connected and we can stay in the Word. Uh, tonight, as we come to you, before we get started, there are some announcements that I want to share with you. Uh, starting with our men's Zoom, our uh, brotherhood get-together, our started get-together on Monday. So Monday evenings at 7 p.m., our men are connecting through Zoom uh, to have a time of Bible study together. Uh, they will not meet this coming Monday because that is Memorial Day, but Monday afterward, uh, we're inviting all of our brothers to uh, join in on that uh, Zoom meeting. Also, our One Heart Women's Ministry uh, has already been meeting, and they come together on Wednesdays at noon, again, uh, through Zoom. Sister uh, Minister Darlene uh, Ephraim uh, sends out a link, and so that's where you can connect and share uh, and, and see what's going on with our women's ministry. So please, ma'am, please, sir, take advantage of those. Well, I also ask you to be in prayer uh, for Sister Kim Thomas, a uh, member of our church. Her mom passed away, and so we want to keep lifting up that family during this time. Uh, graduates, so all of our graduates this, uh, this year, 2020, I know that it is going to be a little bit different than normal graduations. A lot of places are doing uh, virtual graduations, but we want to still honor you, even though we may not be together uh, on that Sunday when we usually honor our graduates. We still want to honor you. So please, ma'am, please, sir, get your graduation photo, your cap and gown photo uh, to uh, Sister Aquaberry. Send that to admin at cmbcaustin.org so that's admin a-d-m-i-n at cmbcaustin.org and let's get those to her by june 1st so that we too can uh, celebrate you and then lastly uh, we want to remind you that uh, giving uh, is a part of uh, our, our worship is a part of our discipleship and membership as a church so continue to give uh, to uh, the work of our ministry either through Easy Tithe or through our church website. You can mail it in, you can drop it off, uh, but let's continue to give. All right, let's get into uh, the word this evening. We want to begin with a moment of prayer. Let's bow together. Gracious God, our Father, we say thank you uh, once again, Master, uh, first for who you are, being the God that you are, being the divine other. There is no other God like you. So we bless you, Father. We honor you. We praise you. We lift you, God. We magnify your name. We come uh, this evening, Father God, to study your word. We have been separated through social uh, or physical distancing, but Father God, we still want to be related uh, with you and to you through your word. So we pray, Father God, that you will use this time, use this time as a Corinth church family, Use this time as those who may uh, be looking in uh, and sharing with us as guests uh, through the YouTube. That, Father God, use this time in your word to build us up, God, to grow us and mature us. Position us, Father, for the next stage uh, in our lives and for those things that will come against us. So, Lord God, it is through and uh, uh, by your word uh, that we are helped, that we are convicted, that we are challenged. Uh, that we are changed. So have your way now. This in the precious and wonderful, awesome name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. If you don't mind grabbing your Bibles, and let's turn together to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Then I also want you to flip over to the book of Hebrews. Uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Let's put your finger there. Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, if you're a part of the Korean Church family, you should have received uh, an email, part of an email uh, 
way of uh, getting information in that email about tonight's Bible study will be the outline for tonight's lesson. On that outline, you'll find these two passages of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. I'm reading from the New King James version of this passage, and it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. And then when I look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it tells me what faith is. And it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So with these two passages, I want to talk tonight about faithing the vision. Faithing uh, the vision. You received announcements from our church, you know, that this is kind of uh, the tag of the focus for this year is facing, uh, faithing, faithing the vision. Now, as we entered into uh, the year of 2020, uh, nobody could have uh, seen or even imagined a, a COVID-19, uh, this coronavirus, this pandemic uh, that has come upon us. No one could have seen it coming. Uh, many of us came into 2020 and some uh, probably didn't see health issues or health concerns uh, coming. You didn't see that job layoff uh, coming. You didn't see losses in your stock portfolio as a result of what's going on. You didn't see that coming. Uh, weddings uh, possibly being postponed. You didn't see that coming. The fact that we are homeschooling our children, we didn't see that coming. All of these things we were not able to see. We had no forewarning that they were on uh, they were on the way. We didn't see these things in our future, but, but now that they are here, now that they are seen, how should we view our situation? How should we look at uh, what is happening around us? And it doesn't just have to be uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus. It could be any concern or situation that you're facing how should we as believers see that? Uh, and, and let me invite those who are non-believers. How should we look at these uh, issues, these concerns, these circumstances? Well, our text would suggest that we as believers look at this situation or any of our concerns through the eyes of faith. Uh, we, we looked at uh, this year as we came into 2020. Uh, kind of using uh, the idea of vision, having perfect vision or perfect sight. And so uh, looking at what's in front of us and then those things that are unseen, how do we function as believers? That's why I tagged this uh, particular lesson and tagged our focus for this year, faithing the vision. Because as believers, we do not look at things, we should not look at things that we see uh, just by what is happening around us, but we should look at them through the eyes of faith. So tonight, here's some thoughts that we want to consider. Number one, we need to go blind to our circumstances. Go blind to our circumstances. That means we can't let what is seen dictate the outcome. Can't let what is seen dictate the outcome. And we'll look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18 in a minute. The outcomes belong to God. Number two, uh, walking or living by faith is learning how to move without maps. We need to trust in the direction even though we don't know uh, the destination. Can we take a step and move out on faith, even though you haven't told me, God, where you're leading me to, where you're taking me to. So walking by faith is learning how to move without a map. And then number three, uh, we want to demonstrate a greater level of faith when we believe through our seeing. Not seeing to believe, but believing in order that we might see. It's acting as if it is already so. So with, with any Bible study lesson, uh, anything that we're looking at in the Bible, I want to be sure that I'm looking at it from uh, the context of 
how it was presented in that time. Because I need to start there before I start to apply it to my context, our context, and what's happening now and today. And so when we look at the outline and you look at uh, your lesson there, in this letter to the church at Corinth, Paul is bearing his soul and he professes his abiding love for the Corinthians despite the apparent fickleness of their affection for him. Remember, this is the second letter he writes. Uh, in the first letter of Corinthians, you'll find Paul addressing some issues and concerns that have come up in this church. Uh, issues of, of um, immorality, issues of uh, conflict with one another. Uh, and so in that letter, he's dealing with all of those uh, church issues, right? But now here in the second letter, he's dealing with them because they have allowed false teachers to enter into uh, the congregation. And these false teachers have been sharing a doctrine uh, that is untrue, all right, that is off. And, and so Paul is trying to address that. And then not only have they gone after these false teachers, they have also begun to now put down Paul as an apostle and the teaching that he provided them. So now they're, they're almost discrediting him as an apostle. And so in this letter, you'll find Paul defending himself, right? Uh, now, in defending his apostolic ministry, uh, apostolic means that he was, and Paul claims that he was also one of the originals who not only saw Christ um, uh, living and moving and breathing while he was here on earth, like his disciples who walked with him, uh, but the, the, the apostles speak more specifically to those uh, who saw him after his death, his burial, and his, his resurrection. These called out men of God, and Paul says, I'm one of them. He says, I'm one of them. And so in defending his apostolic ministry, Paul talks about knowing what it meant to suffer in the ministry. Now, when we read chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and let's look at verses 8 through 10, he talks about his suffering. When he says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So he's giving us a quick synopsis of the things that he has endured for the gospel sake. So he talks about this suffering. But then in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, this verse is a part of a section of scriptures that talks about his eternal perspective. His eternal perspective. Again, how he sees eternity. It's, it's the way he looks at his ministry. Uh, in my Bible, or in the New King James Bible, it talks about this particular section as seeing it, the invisible. Okay? So I believe that this is important because we need to remember that our decisions have eternal consequences. Paul says when we look at life, we ought to see life with an eternal perspective because what we do today can have eternal consequences. What we do in life should be viewed from the perspective of the not yet, but the here and now. And so it is from this context, this context of uh, God, I don't see it yet, but I, I want to act here and now like it's going to be in the hereafter. So our lesson points us to that, especially when it comes to what we see. What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Let me repeat that. What we can see, the things that are facing us, remember those things are just temporary. They're only here for a moment. But what is unseen, the things that are in the heavenly realms, in the spiritual realm, those things that are unseen, they last for an eternity. So, let's get into this lesson. Verse 7 of our text is a parenthetical statement by Paul as he presses his point, right, about our existence. Now, when you look at verses 
um, let's go to verses 6, 7, and 8 of chapter 5. 6, 7, and 8. Verse 6, chapter 5, 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So when Paul is talking with them and sharing with them an understanding uh, about where we exist, you know, there are only two places where um, we, we, we can exist. There's only two places where we can uh, reside, right? As believers, as believers. There are only two places we reside as believers. Again, looking at the text, if you go back at the beginning of chapter 5, for we know, and I, I stress that part about believers because the we in the text, as you read through, the we is talking about us. So we as believers should understand that there are only two places where we exist. Either we exist at home in our bodies or we exist away from our bodies in the presence of God as believers. So we are still alive. That means we're here at home in this, this body, this temporary structure, right? When we are no longer in this body, then, then we are present with the Lord. Those are the two locations where we exist. Those are the only two places we can exist. So his courage and his confidence in this understanding is being able to make the statement and not lose heart or not stumble at what he sees. We talked about earlier all the things. He's been perplexed. He's been crushed. He's been persecuted. He's been forsaken. Uh, 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 he's been struck down. Uh, all of these things that Paul has dealt with and all of these things that may be in front of him, again, he still considers these as temporary issues. And he says, I will conduct myself based on these temporary issues. I will keep my eye, my focus, my confidence in the thing that I don't see, and that is God himself. So my faith and my trust is in him. He did not let what is seen dictate how he lived. Go look at uh, chapter uh, 4 again, verse 18. He says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, and the things which are not seen are eternal. So this means that our circumstances will fade to dark as we take steps of faith. That is understanding that, that all of what we deal with, all of our circumstances, he says to us, ought to fade to darkness. In other words, we ought to become blind to our circumstances and stay focused on that which is unseen, and that is God, and what God has said, and what God has, has promised. So when we look at this lesson, and when we look at the text, Paul, according to the lesson, uh, has gotten to the place where he lost sight of everything that he was facing. He lost sight of his situation and then he began to trust God. He began to have faith in God for the outcome of his life. That was one of the things I want to be sure that we understood from tonight's lesson is that we ought not let the circumstances or our situation dictate our outcome. You got to become blind to what we see. What we see and what we what we hear uh, about this situation, COVID-19. Uh, some people are conducting themselves, right, based on what it is they see. Uh, a lot of the news reports and stuff, they're basing it uh, and how they react to it, they're basing it on what they see. And Paul is saying to us as believers, for we, we understand though, that we should not focus on the seen, we should focus on the unseen. We're not to disregard the facts of our condition or our circumstance, but we are to see them through the eyes of faith. Now, this was the mistake that the Israelites made when Moses directed the spies to go into the promised land and check it out. They made the mistake of listening to the report of 10 spies who came back with a negative report. Uh, you go back and read Numbers chapter 13. 
Remember, 10 of those spies, 10 of the 12 that were sent out to take a look at the land, they came back and they had a negative report. What they had to share negated what God had already promised. God has said, I'm giving you a land full of milk and honey. And, and, and they came back and they did share with everybody all the wonderful and awesome things that they saw. Uh, not only did they share the news, they brought evidence. They brought back evidence of how, how lush the land was and how, how much it, was, it, it provided. They brought back evidence, but they also brought back a negative report. And they told the people, we can't do it. We can't, we can't overtake this land because we have seen giants. Talk about the, the size of the people in the land are bigger than us. And so they messed up. They messed up on getting into the promised land because they were listening to uh, this negative report that they had received. We should never let that uh, negative impossible, uh, unattainable thing that is in front of us. The way it looks, we shouldn't let that dictate our, our outcome. They negated the promises of God. They let what they saw trump what God had said. John Wesley told a worried man, he said, look past your words. They saw a cow looking over a wall, and so Wesley asked the man, do you, do you understand? Uh, why she's looking over the wall, why the cow is looking over the wall, and the man says, no, I don't. And, and, and Wesley replied, she's looking over the wall because she can't look through the wall. Same thing with us. Sometimes we have obstacles in front of us. Sometimes we see cir circumstances and situations in front of us, and, and, and we can't look past it. Wesley is saying to this worried man, you need to look past what you See, that's, that's what the cow is doing. She's looking past what she sees. Faith looks past what you see. Faith enables us, enables us to go blind to our circumstances and place our focus on God. Look past what we see and then look to him who controls everything that we see. All right? So the first part of this lesson is to understand that we need to go blind to our circumstances. Secondly, we need to move without maps. Move without maps. This passage helps us to know that we are uh, to move in a direction that God is giving us without even knowing the destination. Paul says we walk by faith. We walk by faith. The word walk means to tread. It means to take steps. It means to walk about. It means to to live, or it's how we behave. It's to go about doing. So, so our faith is not to sit, but our faith sometimes it, it is to, to go about doing, even though you don't know where, you don't know when, you don't know how, but it is moving, right? It is taking steps in a direction when we don't have the destination. There are times, right, when we will not know the way, but God is asking us that we trust him and, and, and trust him for every step that he wants us to take. All he's asking is that we just take a step. Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. If you look at Genesis chapter 12. Let's turn there real quick. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Get out of your country, from your family, out of your father's house to a land that I will show you. God was asking Abraham to take a step. He says, trust me, Abraham, I'll show you. I just need you to make a move. But God didn't tell him where he was going. God didn't give him the destination. Take a step. And so that's what God is saying to us today. Don't be, uh, don't be so focused on what's happening that it causes you to freeze. And you don't, you don't make a move. You don't do nothing because fear.
fear has caused you to freeze. Not knowing how it's going to turn out causes you to, to freeze. Because you don't have enough information, it's causing you to freeze. And God is saying, no, I, I'm just needing you to move without a map. Just move without a map. I know you have GPS on your phone, but I'm asking you to move through my GPS. And so God is saying to us, take a step. Because faith is not necessarily, uh, it's not taking an unnecessary risk. Faith is taking a calculated risk. And the calculation involves God. Because when you put God in the calculation, uh, you end up with success. You plus God equals success, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. You plus God equals to success. He'll get us to our destination. So, moving without maps. We walk by faith. Paul says we need to take some steps. And move in the direction that God has shown us. And then lastly, uh, when it comes to faithing the vision, I believe the text is tailored to teach us that we got to believe uh, before we see. Believing is seeing. And that's, that's coming from our second passage here in the, in the lesson, Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is hope in the unseen. It is confidence. It is trust. It is persuasion and belief in something that is not yet. And Paul talks about this uh, again in Romans 8 24. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. If I see it, then what am I hoping for? It's already here. It's before me. I have, I have no other reason to hope. But Paul is saying, the thing that we hope in, the hope of our resurrection, the hope of, of, of being raised with Christ again. I'm living, I'm walking, I'm taking steps based on that hope. So he said, this hope, I, I don't see it. He says, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Hope for what you do not see. A trust in what you do not see. That's the definition of faith according to Hebrews 11 and 1. That's what Paul is saying to us here uh, through the Romans passage, Romans 8. He's saying we don't need to see it if we're trusting God. Have our hope resting in Him. That belief, it says that God, I, I, I know you got it. Whatever is going on around me, I know you got it. And so we put our hope in him and then we wait for it with perseverance. Perseverance. You got to push through. So you got to push through all the negative talk and still keep hoping. You got to push through all of the negative facts and still keep hoping. He says persevere. Keep pushing through. Going past the point of quitting. That's perseverance. And keep pushing through. One our hope is not a blind hope, but it's a hope in God. Paul tells us in verse 5, he says, that's where I'm getting this confidence from. That's where I'm getting this hope from. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So Paul is saying, I'm getting my help from God. I'm putting my hope in God. It all comes from him. Uh, and he says, and he has provided his Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Now, another way of looking at that is it is, it is the Spirit who has placed a down payment on what we are hoping for. And it's interesting, as Paul uh, uh, opens up in chapter 5, he's talking about, you know, this earthly house, which means our bodies. Uh, this earthly body, this tent that we are dwelling in, our spirit is dwelling in. Remember, we are not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. So this body, this physical tent of ours, he says, is just temporary. This is going to pass away. And so we are waiting for, we are hoping for the day when this spiritual body, right, uh, this, this, this hope that we have, this spiritual body, will be in the presence of God in, in, in a structure uh, in a building, in a home 
that is able to stand the test of time, which is eternity. These physical bodies can't handle eternity. They're fading away. But our spiritual body that we get, it will be able to withstand eternity. And so Paul, in talking about this new home that we will receive, he uses this analogy that the Holy Spirit has placed a guarantee. In other words, the Holy Spirit has put earnest money on this home that we're hoping for. Earnest money is what you put down in order to purchase a brand new home. In order to show the buyer, I'm sorry, in order to show the seller that you're serious about buying, you put some upfront, you, you put some earnest money down and say, I'm willing to commit to this contract of buying this home. And so what Paul is saying to us today, in our believing, before we see it, we're putting some earnest money down on the contract to say to God, I'm trusting you. Before I even see it, I'm putting my money down that this contract is going to go through and I'm going to have my home. I'm going to be able to purchase my home. And so what God is saying to us today when it comes to faithing the vision, don't let what we see, don't let what we see dictate how we operate. Take it in. Take the facts in. Take the information in. But then let's process that through the eyes and through the viewpoint of faith. Trusting and knowing that I know it looks hard. But I know God says I'm able to do all things through Christ. So that's faith. That's faith talk. I know it looks hard. But faith talk says I'm believing that I blind myself to how hard it looks. I begin to move and act like it's already done. And I'm beginning and believing God before I even see. So I want us to remember that our lives or our walk in the present concerns of today is to be marked by faith, guided by faith, directed by faith, which is believing it before we can see it. So I'm trusting that everything that we're facing, and I know that we have individuals that, that are part of our church family and, and that those who are uh, watching this as guests uh, tonight through this YouTube I'm, I'm not discrediting what we are dealing with. I'm not discrediting what we're going through. I'm just asking that we don't look at it through our, our, our physical eyes, but we look at it through the eyes of faith. We faith our vision. We faith what we uh, see and trust the word of God. Trust what God said over what we see. Folks are without work. Some people are struggling just to have food to, to eat. People don't know what's going to happen Tomorrow, all of these things, yes, they are happening. Yes, it is real. But I'm trusting and believing that God, who created the heavens and the earth, that God, who has every resource known to man, that God, with all power, with all might, that God is able to hold and keep us. And so I'd rather put my trust in him than to let my life be dictated by what I see. It's not easy. It's not easy. But the more we get into his, his word, the more we're able to believe without seeing. Let's bow. Gracious God, we say thank you tonight. Thank you, Father, for this, this word. The trust and believe, God, that it goes forth and it does not return to you void. It will accomplish, it will achieve every purpose and plan for which you have sent it. I believe, Father God, that you have used me to send your word to some man, woman, girl, or even boy to know, Father, that in the midst of the circumstances and situations of our lives, we don't have to let those rule and have reign over our walk, over our living, but we can trust you, we can trust your word. And so, Lord God, we just bless you and we just give you thanks. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful evening.